Hi everyone, my name is Angela Pierce. Um, today I'm going to be talking about uh, social oriented technologies and its attractability, its influences on individuals academic, academically and neuro, neurologically. Uh, social technologies, by, by definition, is technologies that allow individuals the ability to socialize themselves with others. Uh, social technology has developed an omnipresent in various societies. Its attractability to societies is based on various key factors that allow individuals to socialize themselves and allows them to modify their technology apparatuses and also platforms to fit their personalities. Uh, from a from a um, edification aspect, whatever we live in a technology driven world, to where technology has become a necessity for individuals to gain academic experiences, to have quality education, and also to uh, develop teacher and student um, quality relationships. Um, the theoretical framework of social penetration is going to be used because usually social technology is based on uh, self disclosure. So the higher the level of self-disclosure, the more uh, penetrated the relationship becomes. Uh, is, uh, we're going to talk about how social-oriented technologies has a neuro neurological um, influence um, on individuals based on their level of usability as well. So social-oriented social technologies is, and its presence um, has, is, is based on the adaptability and, the, and usability rates. Uh, they become an accomplishment um, in our daily activities from where we from waking up in the morning to going to bed at night. Our transportations are technology based, uh, they're communication based as well. We have uh, socially oriented technologies, we have smart homes and things of that nature. We use technology to text, we use it to engage in social networking sites. It's socially and to like increase our social enrichment. Uh, they have become a primary determinant based on how individuals communicate and connect with one another. And they also have, they have a, a general or, detri or detrimental impacts on a, person, a person's personal well-being, self-esteem. It can also increase their uh, senses of loneliness. It can increase their senses of uh, boredom. And it also can have uh, counteractive effects as well. Uh, the attractability based on these social oriented technologies is that it has become a social norm. As again, we live in a technology driven world. So technology is the new, is the new normal for us and there is no going back. Uh, the rates of adaptability continues to increase daily, regardless of age, regardless of generation, regardless of which community you're in, and regardless of the academic level. Uh, professional, it, uh, professionals highly uh, depend on technology as well as academic institutions, individuals per se. Uh, as far as the, attract, uh, the attractability for humans, uh, we as humans, we use technology for a multitude of things, whatever one can, a few of them could be uh, for instant gratification. Some of us need like positive feedback, whatever we, we want to be accepted. So we use social oriented technologies uh, for those purposes. Uh, we use mobile technologies for like online permanency. Uh, we use it for permanent connections where it had, we're always connected even when we think that we're not. Uh, the small size devices has allowed us to change the context. Context in reference to where we communicate, how we communicate, how often we communicate, or how often we socialize ourselves. It has allowed us to sustain our interpersonal relationships, to bring um, higher quality to those. It also has removed geographical constraints to where we can talk to anybody around the world, uh, those that are familiar and those that's, that's not familiar. It has allowed us to modify who we are to where we're, a we're able to either show individuals our authentic selves or our desired selves. So technology has allowed us to modify ourselves based on what we desire or who we ought to be. Um, in reference to those who does not have these opportunities, whatever, the, it, who are denied these opportunities to engage in socialized technologies, um, it, ha it, it does have a tendency to 
uh, reduce a, per a person's self-worth and determination. It does have the opportunity to, it, it doesn't provide them with the opportunity to increase their potential, their job, their employment opportunities, their, their education opportunities, their academic experience, or to, in, in, in some cases, it can like diminish their um, academic experiences as well. Um, it has also um, increased their loneliness, senses of loneliness and isolation, particularly in the COVID-19 world to where technology is the new way of life and it's as far as how, to, how we uh, socialize ourselves. And this, is, and this is particularly true for the older generations. Um, in reference to the technology, what are from the pedag pedagogical um, aspect, uh, if when teachers are provided with adequate technology, those that are dependable, those that have like higher quality broadband connectivities, those that have those in which they have garnered the necessary training and instructions, whatever, it can increase their their teaching quality. Um, it, it allows teachers and students to become more engaged with one another. It also allows teachers and students to develop a, a higher level of social presence to where uh, if you're in a school setting without technology, with, without technology, whatever, you're only there per se from your physical being. But it even allows you to communicate and uh, connect with and socialize yourselves with teachers and students out, out, on the outside of the academic setting. Uh, the teaching quality, uh, teaching quality again. Um, when teachers and students are provided with the necessary support needed when they are provided with the funding, the necessary tools, the necessary uh, support, meaning technical support, administrative support, and things of that nature, it does have the ability to increase the teaching qualities. A uh, teacher, it, it, it increases the teacher and student dyadic relationships and provides them with healthy relationships, those of which out is, is like an off, a springboard for higher academic achievement, higher academic experiences, and all of the above. Again, for technology, um, when they have access to the various components, technical support again, administrative support, adequate, adequate training and administrative support, it increases the overall academic experience, not necessarily for the students and the, and the not necessarily for the students and the teacher, but also for all stakeholders. There are some um, advantages and disadvantages when it comes to social oriented technologies. Uh, some of the advantages is based on the previous um, discussion as far as how it improves the teaching quality, it improves the social presence, it in increases the, so, uh, the academic experiences uh, for those who, who are afforded the opportunity to use social oriented technologies in an educational setting. Um, in reference to those who are not provided with these opportunities, uh, they, if, and they're not give, they're not garnered with the opportunity to use uh, social oriented technologies to socialize themselves on a higher level, uh, it can have some kind of it can have detrimental or uh, disadvantaged effects on the on these um, individuals, particularly students, to be to where they become disengaged. They uh, they don't communicate as much, or they may be a loner to where they don't really talk or um, talk to students or they don't ask enough questions to where even if they even if they're not familiar with the academic curriculum uh, the attendance rates may may drop uh, the, uh, the academic experience they don't have the opportunities to collaborate with others and things of that nature um, in reference to the neuro neurological aspect of things whatever the Based on the level of social oriented technology use, whatever research has shown that it does have the ability to have um, an impact on a neuro, neuro, neurological system. Those being, it can, it can diminish uh, memory and th that causes forgetfulness. It can cause you to, sh your, your mind to shift and you're not an avid thinker in the same manner that you wouldn't be because you now you have allowed technology to think for you. 
um, it references in the cognitive aspect, whatever, it reduces cognitive function to where it's the same thing. It reduces your thinking patterns. It re reduces your um, ability to store and process information more, uh, more effectively and efficiently. Uh, mental uh, muscle skeletal health, whatever. It, sitting there and looking at a computer screen or a telephone for hours in and hours out. It can have a diminishing effect where uh, for people develop uh, wrist pain, they develop back pain, they develop eye strains, and things of that nature. Based on the theory that, um, again, the social penetration theory, it is basically self-disclosure. Social-oriented technologies is a communication platform. It allows individuals to communicate with one another. It allows them to sustain their relationships, to build healthy relationships, to establish new relationships with strangers. It allows them to um, disclose conversations or disclose personal information based on, based on the level of comfortability with the individuals that they interact with. Um, in reference to a social ad, uh, an academic aspect, teachers and students are with one another day in and day out. So self-disclosure is crucial. So, in conclusion, whatever, uh, what we're going to talk about is how social-oriented technologies has become a social norm. We're going to talk that the, the, it, it has developed a societal attraction, it has developed an individual attraction, and it also has it also has uh, provided uh, certain communities uh, with stable connections to where people are currently permanently online. They are permanently connected to social networking sites day in and day out, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, with, and even if, they are, even if they're not physically looking at their, holding, having their phone or looking at their phone per se. Uh, it has become an important entity in our lives where people in uh, the society heavily depends on technology for every aspect of life. So, in reference to future suggestions, um, there is there is a lot of information out there based on social oriented technologies. Well, what we have covered today very briefly was based on how technology influences individuals individually, how it has developed an attraction in society. We developed, we talked about the social penetration theory as far as how technology uh, has an effect on individuals and also how uh, the social penetration theory is based on accessibility and how it, how access, how, ha how having access to these various technologies can enhance your social richness com compared to not having it to where it, it increases senses of loneliness and senses of boredom. Um, future research studies um, can use the same thing to, to help further understand social oriented technologies. Those being said, whatever it can be, they can use different platforms, they can use different conceptual frameworks, they can use individuals, they can do uh, causal comparisons or try to find a relationship between social oriented technologies and how uh, and the level of usage between individuals. Uh, in reference to um, educational aspect, they can go into the school system to see how these social oriented technologies are helping to advance students. How are these social oriented technologies helping advance the academic system, the teaching quality of teachers, and things of that nature. So without further ado, I'm gonna conclude this. I'm gonna conclude this uh, post. I am going to conclude this uh, presentation. If there's any questions or concerns, you can reach out to me. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you.